Andy Kaufman, thank you for joining me for this video episode of the People and Projects podcast. Well, if you've been following the podcast for a while, you know that most of our episodes are related to the leadership side of things. Whether you're leading teams or projects, it's the focus often is on the leadership side. Well, you know, it's important every once in a while to make sure we have a technical PM aspect to our episode as well. And we're in the process of updating our e-learning for the new PMBOK guide that'll be coming out later this year. And though the PMBOK guide isn't changing regarding critical path, critical path is one of those areas that when we teach PMP prep classes, that a lot of times people go, you know, I don't know if I exactly get it. I mean, at a high level, it's easy to get, but more the details of how do you use critical path. So whether you are a PMP looking for PDUs, whether you are an aspiring PMP and you wanna know this more, you know, there's actually value in understanding critical path regardless. And so in this episode, I'm going to walk you through an update to our e-learning when it comes to critical path. Enjoy. Well, let's talk about critical path. You know, this is a subject I get a real kick out of talking to people about because I, when I'm working with a team that maybe doesn't know quite as much about it, so I'll say, you know, what is critical path from your perspective? And sometimes people go, well, it's a series of tasks that, that must be done, which is kind of a funny one because, I mean, which one doesn't have to be done? They all have to be done. Or it's the most important task. Well, I suppose that's true to some degree. It is the hottest task this week. Or I was working with this one team and I, and I said, okay, <laughs> so what's a critical path task? And this guy raises his hand. He goes, it's the task I don't want to be assigned to because you know, it's critical. All right. So let's check out the actual definition. It's the sequence of activities. So there's some sequence that, that represent the longest path to the project, which determines the shortest duration. Now, I don't know about you. I think that sounds really confusing. You know, the longest you know, path, the shortest duration. What does that actually mean? Well, let's take a look at this simple four task you know, project here. And I've got activity A, B, C, and D. And let's say these are durations, okay? So I have a duration of two and eight and six and three. So how many paths do I have here? Well, I've got two paths. I've got A, B, D, and A, C, D. Well, you look at these numbers, which is the longest path? Well, two plus eight plus three is longer than two plus six plus three. So the critical path, the sequence of activities that represent the longest, that would be A, B, D is the critical path. All right. Now, with a short project like this, you can just eyeball it. But let's look at this a little bit more deeply. Okay. So what this is saying, these are finish to start relationships. So A must finish before B and C can start. D can't start until these finish. And so what it's saying is B and C can be done at the same time. Okay. So work with me on this one. Let's say since this is eight and this is six, if I start activity C, at the exact same time I start B, how many days, let's say these are days, how many days do I have at the end? Well, I think it's pretty clear. I've got two days at the end, okay? Now, how many days can I delay activity C and still be okay? Well, two days. I could delay it by two days and I'd be okay. So we've got this idea of there's two days of float here. And I've got an early start. I can start it this early and if I do, I'll finish here or I could delay it and I have a late start and a late finish. And the difference is the float, okay? So this down here has got two days of float. Now, if you go for the certification exam, you actually have to calculate this by hand. So I'm gonna show you on this simple project here of how to do that. Now, I do have to say up front, there are two ways to do this. There's a simpler way and there's a more difficult way. So, of course, which one am I going to show you? Well, the more difficult way. And it's because this is how tools like Microsoft Project tend to show it, okay? And if you get to know this way, it's easier to do the other one than later on, right? So let's, let's check it out. So we, we start here with a one. In this technique, we start with a one. That is our early start. And we've got a duration of two. So let's say I've got a task. 
It starts on Monday. It's a two-day duration. If my early start is Monday, what's the early finish going to be? Well, it's either end of day Tuesday or the beginning of Wednesday, depending on how you look at it. And so the way you calculate using this technique is you take the early start plus the duration, that'd be three, minus one. So add these, subtract one. So if one plus two is three, drop it down. What does that mean? My early start's Monday, and I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end it at the end of day Tuesday. So if this ends at the end of day Tuesday, when can B and C start? Well, I think it's pretty obvious, Wednesday, right? So when you go over the divide, you're just gonna add one to it, okay? So I'm gonna take the two, I'm gonna add one to it, so I've got three and three. So I've got my early finish there, I had one to it, my early start up here is three. So how do you calculate the early finish for these guys? Same thing, take this plus that, so that'd be 11, minus one, so I've got 10, down here, three plus six, that's my nine, subtract one, I've got eight, my early start is three, my early finish is eight, I've got three and 10. Okay? Now remember, we added one when we went over the divide, and so we're gonna have to add one when we go over the divide here, but do we add one to the eight, or do we add one to the 10? So I want you to think about this. D can't start until B and C are done. So I could say, go nine, but I can't do that because 10's not done. So when we're going this direction, it's called the forward pass, when we go this direction, you take the longest one. So my 10, but I'm gonna need all that 10, so I add one over the divide, this goes to 11. Same thing, 11 plus three, 14, minus one is 13, okay? So that's the forward pass. What's that, what's that actually saying? It says that it's gonna take me 13 days. That's the longest path through here it's not gonna be any shorter than that, okay? So it's gonna take 13 days. So that's the forward pass. So now we're gonna do the backward pass. Now, the way that works is you take the longest one, which is the 13, and you drop that down. So I've got the 13. Now that's, that's the late finish. How do I get the late start? Well, you remember for this one, we added this and subtracted one. What we do here is we take the late finish minus the duration plus one. So I have 13, Minus the three, plus one, so I've got 11, okay? So what does, that, what does that mean? The earliest I can start this is 11. The latest I can start this is 11. This better start on 11, okay? Now, if the latest I can start this guy is 11, what's the latest I can finish these guys? Well, I need that 11, so these would go to 10. This would go to 10, and it's the same thing. I take that 10 minus the eight, that's two, plus one, it goes to three. I take the 10 minus the six is four, plus one goes to five. Now, you remember before when I said, you know, if you start it right here, when does it end? Well, it starts at three, it ends at eight. Or we could delay two days. Well, guess what? Five and 10. So that's the idea. That's exactly how it works, okay? Now, we have to figure out the late finish here. We know we have to subtract one over the divide. So how do we do it? This number is either going to be three minus one or it's going to be five minus one. The latest I can start this is three. The latest I can start this is five. What's the latest I can finish this? Well, going this direction, you take the biggest number. This way, you take the smallest number. So I've got the three, but I'm going to need that three. I take a two. Take two minus two is zero. Add one, it goes to one. Okay? And float or slack is the difference between these two. Okay? So I've got no float up here got no float here, I have two days of float. Now, critical path is this series of tasks with no float. So my critical path goes like this, okay? Now, for a small project, we kind of knew that about five minutes ago, we kind of knew what the critical path was. But by doing it by hand, we can actually see, we can prove that that has two days of float. Now, let's get a little bit more practical in this. Let's go through a practical scenario. Let's say activity C here. Okay? It's allocated to six days. We have two days of float. Okay? You assign that task to me. Right? And at the end of the sixth day, I come up to you and say, oh, I'm not done. I need an extra day. What do you say? Well, there are some options. One is you're fired. <laughs> Another option is it's okay. Right? Isn't that true? It is okay. We've got two days of float. I'm saying I only need one more day. And so we could do that. 
But I wanna invite you to consider a third option. And that third option is, hmm, tell me what's going on. Why, why are we having trouble with that date? And I say that because I learned this from a mentor that you drive behavior by the questions you ask. And if I just give in, if they know, you know that you're just gonna give in, let's say, then they're more likely to go, hey, I need an extra day. But if they know you're gonna say, hey, um, what's driving the delay? You're driving the behavior that says, uh, I know that I know my project manager is gonna look into this. So let's say you and I look into this and we, we think we have a plan for the next day. So this six goes up to seven, okay? and this float goes down from two to one. Now let's say at the end of the seventh day, <laughs> I come up to you and go, oh, I'm still not done. I need an extra day. <laughs> so what do you say? I mean, the options are, you're fired, it's okay. The third option might be, well, you know, insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. So it might be, let's get some extra eyes on it. So you, I look at it, maybe we pull a couple extra people into it, but we come up with a plan, looks like a good plan. So this goes up to eight now. This goes down to zero, makes sense? By the way, when that's at zero, that means that's on the critical path as well because two plus eight plus three is two plus eight plus three, so they're both on the critical paths. You can have multiple critical paths. Do you want that? No, because now if anything goes long, we're in trouble. But in this case, it's on the critical path. Now at the end of the eighth day, if I come up to you and I go, guess what? I'm still not done. Now what are the options? <laughs> now I'm probably fired. But you know what happens now? This goes from eight up to nine and the project just slipped by a day. This is why critical path is such a big deal because if something's on the critical path and it goes long, it delays the entire project. It may not even seem like that important of a task, but because of its duration, if it goes long, it delays the entire project. So here's my question for you. Would you tell that person they have two days afloat? Would you tell them? You know, most people tell me, well, no because they'll do the math. I mean, six plus two, you know, there's a reason why it's called slack. You know, they'll just take advantage of that time. In fact, some people tell me, no, I'd tell them four, because then if they're behind schedule, it's win-win. You know, we're still okay and they feel guilty, <laughs> but that's not what I'm recommending that you do. What, you know, and generally speaking, I will err on the side of transparency with people that seem like they'll be responsible with that. So I'll tell the, the person two days before, especially if I think this six is aggressive. And I may say something like, I, I would prefer you not to use it, but if, if by sticking to that six, we're gonna have quality problems or something like that, then let me know. But that's an example of how you can use float. Right. Now let me give you one more example. Up here, activity B. It's, uh, it's on the critical path, it's eight days. Do you ever have to wait for someone on the other side of the business and they don't have the same sense of urgency that you do, and they just keep dragging their feet, and the longer that they drag their feet, the more difficult it is for you to deliver. Now, those aren't always on the critical path, but sometimes they are. And so let's say that activity B here is someone on the other side of the business, they need to sign off on something, let's say. They need to sign off, and let me show you kind of like old Andy versus new Andy of how I used to do this situation, okay? Old Andy would go, this is really, really important. I need you to sign off on this. Please, please, please. Right? So now I'm exaggerating, but that's kind of characteristic of what was going on. New Andy says, um, activity B here, it's on the critical path. I need your sign off on this. It's allocated to eight days. You don't have to get back to me today, but I need to let you know that since it is on the critical path, if it takes you nine days instead of eight, the project slips by a day. Can you hit eight days? Pause. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at like old Andy versus new Andy. So how would you characterize old Andy here? Um, words like desperate, words like in a panic, overly emotional. This is like that person who, you know, uh, every email is sent with the exclamation point and, you know, their hair is always on fire. I think that's what was going on in mine. And, I, and if anything, I was begging a favor or maybe a, the best way to say it is relying on social capital. You know, on, hey, I've helped you in the past, please help me here. So that's kind of like the old Andy. What's different about the new Andy? Do you see how it's a different sort of discussion? Like it's talking about urgency like this one was, 
It tells about the critical path, but it also has the consequences of inaction. If it takes you nine days instead of eight, the project slips by a day. Now, it's not a threat, but it's just communicating the consequences of inaction, which is good because it's true, right? And so it helps them understand that, well, you know, maybe they don't even want to do it, but you know what? If they don't, it's going to hurt the project. It's going to delay. Just that fact may give them some motivation to deliver. But what about the last part of this new handy one? Can you hit eight days? Pause. Okay. What, are, what, are, what are the three likely answers to that, that question? Yes, no, and maybe. Uh -huh. So you know where I got this? Dr. Robert Cialdini has his weapons of influence. And he calls it commitment and consistency. And the idea of commitment and consistency is if you can get someone to make a commitment, they're more likely to do it. And so the example he gives is a restaurant that's taking reservations. And at the end of the call, what, this is what they'd say. they go, okay, we got you down for a party of two Saturday night at 6.30. And if you can't make it, just give us a call. Okay? See you Saturday night. So that's a pretty normal sort of conversation. And you know what? Most people showed up. But of the people that did not show, 30% of them did not call. And for a restaurant, that's money literally left on the table. They could have given that table to somebody else. So they changed the script just this little bit. All right, we got you down for a party two, Saturday night at 6.30. And by the way, if you can't make it, will you call us? Pause. Okay. Now, what would you say? I mean, are you, would you really say, no, <laughs> you're not going to say that. I mean, most people, without even thinking, would say, sure. Right? And they're not going to some app saying, remember to call the restaurant if we, I mean, they just, with, with a very low commitment, but they ask for a commitment. And that simple ask for a commitment dropped the number of no-shows from 30% to 10% overnight. Okay? So can I just encourage you, when, especially when something's on the critical path like that, ask for the commitment. Can you hit eight days? Pause. And I'm telling you, zip it. Wait for them to respond. If they say yes, they're more likely to do it, especially the more public that yes. So maybe you copy them on an email with some other people, thanking them for their commitment. Okay? Uh, you still may want to check in with them on day six and seven as well, but still, you got the commitment. What if they say no? <laughs> Can you hit eight days? Pause. No. Well, it feels like, man, it didn't work. And yet, this doesn't mean it didn't work. I mean, how is that good to know? Well, first of all, we know it now, not eight days from now, so that's good. But it, you can have a different sort of conversation. You can be like, well, uh, when could you have it done? Because if it's just one more day, that you know, maybe it's not that big of a deal. Maybe we can find some way to rearrange some things. Maybe what they'd say is, well, I'm going to be gone on vacation for two weeks. That's helpful information. Well, then you could have a conversation about, well, could we bring someone else over, right? So, but once again, we know it now, not eight days from now. What if they say maybe? Can you hit eight days? Pause. Maybe. Hmm. How about this? Treat maybe like a no. Same thing. What would it take to make it a yes? What's causing the uncertainty? You have a different sort of conversation. The challenge here is when we get to maybe's close cousin, probably. <laughs> Can you hit eight days? And they go, probably, or most likely, almost sure. All right, don't stop there. Get them to make a commitment. So in this case, you know, maybe we don't go and escalate it right away, but maybe what we do is we set a tripwire, let's say two days into that. And so if two days into this, we're already off track, escalate, we're going to escalate it up, okay? But if we are on track two days into it, then we'll go with it, okay? So critical path allows you to have those sorts of conversations. But you don't know, if you don't know what's on the critical path, you kind of don't know if something goes long, will it have the ripple effect of delaying your project or not? So this is why critical path is so important. I have to tell you, I'm really excited about some upcoming episodes. The interviews have already happened, and I can't wait to get them out to you uh, real soon. It's going to be Extreme You is the name of the book from Sarah Rob O'Hagan. <laughs> I got to tell you, interviewing Sarah was pretty crazy. I mean, she is definitely an out there sort of person, and the book is kind of an in-your-face, you know what, if you're a little too passive at times, this is a book that's going to really challenge you. And uh, so I look forward to sharing that with you. And then we've got Amy Blankson, The Future of Happiness, which sounds like just another happiness book, but you know what? Really what it is, it's 
Um, how do you deal with tech in the future as it continues to, you know, just be pervasive everywhere? And how does that impact our lives? And then Irresistible by Adam Alter. This is kind of an interesting book, a little bit different take than Amy has about the future of tech. In fact, he's like, you know what? We are far more addicted than what we realize. And so it's interesting to have both of those perspectives in the coming weeks. So I look forward to sharing those with you. All three of those will be audio episodes. And I want to remind you that for our video episodes, I would love for you to send in a video of you or your team introducing an episode. So a couple of people have gotten back to me. They've got them in the works. I can't wait to get them. Okay. So it doesn't have to be any high production value. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but send them in to me. All I need is an MP4 or a .mov file and you know, we'll include you. Okay. And also one last thing, I would love for you to participate in our listener survey. Just go to peopleandprojectspodcast.com slash listener survey. It takes like two minutes or less. And it's really given me some very good insights on how I can keep producing episodes that are tailored to what you want. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the People and Projects podcast. Have yourself a great week.